Hello, everybody, and happy Friday. Happy Friday. And welcome to the Back Catalog Listening Party. My name is Mother Banjo, one of your hosts. My name is Anthony Erig, the other host. And today we have members of the Hen House Prowlers joining us. <laughs> that's all the folks cheering for you guys. Uh, that's, we have... <laughs> that's right. And uh, if you're new to uh, the program, this is our, our weekly musical happy hour where we invite some of our favorite musicians um, to come and listen to albums in their back catalog and, and talk about songwriting and recording and all the kind of fun stuff that goes into uh, the making of, of those albums. And uh, it's also a happy hour, and so we welcome you to, uh, to hop in the comments, say hello. We see Connie's here from Richfield. And uh, Alan, another Thursday in the books. Ain't too proud to G and T. All right, <laughs> um, a little gin yeah, and tonic. Tell us, tell us what you're drinking. And where uh, you Severin from from Germany. I'm sure you guys recognize hey, yeah, um, the the biggest bluegrass fan in Germany. Um, mm-hmm. Great to great to have you here. And Joe sipping a fine pint of stout. Ooh, on the Paddleford, down going down the river. Oh man, mm. I'm jealous. Wow. And uh, our good friend Chris is having Uta Pils alt beer. And uh, we uh, are so glad you are all here. And uh, Ellen, I, what are you what are you imbibing today? You might have heard me crack open a beer uh, during the intro. Um, I'm having a Castle Danger, the, the seventeen seven pale ale. So, nice, kind of the last of my summer beer. You know, I'm drinking right now, even though it's a little chilly today. <laughs> well, I'm going full on fall. I'm staying local. This is from Mankato Brewery, and it's called the Leaf Rake. Nut brown leaf raker nut brown mm. ale. So it's uh, nice. that's, that's the can version. That's for the n- the next one. Um, but it's <laughs> nice and dark and fall like. It's feeling feeling very fall like here. You guys, John uh, and Ben from the Hen House Prowlers, you're joining us from Chicago, both of you. That is correct. All right. Well, what are you guys uh, imbibing on this uh, this afternoon fall afternoon? Uh, I'm drinking a uh, Saint Bernardus mm. Ap Twelve from Whoa. Belgium. Uh, nice and with, and an uh, appropriate glass too. Yes, nice. exactly. There is uh, no, that's the only way to do it. The only way. Um, <laughs> yeah. And you know, as as you'll hear as we talk about the album, we're going to talk about uh, it is topical. All right. So, mm. Excellent. <laughs> and Ben, uh, I I'm not actually I'm I, I hate to I'm not I have I, after we're done here I have to go play a gig and and I I just don't drink before I play so that's that's smart. wise. Sorry, <laughs> that, that is very Not wise. Real. That's very wise. Well, um, we got a couple more folks joining us here. Uh, Matthew Winters, um, who's caught up on the oh on the back catalog episodes the last few days, drinking <laughs> uh, a Verner's ginger ale. Nice, nice, down in Urbana. Good. And uh, Penny cool. is here, finishing off my summer apricot Moscow mule supply. Mmm. <laughs> All right. Oh, and we got to remember that our friends that are not in our time zones here, um, (laughs) like uh, Severin, is a a cup of coffee there at 11 p.m. in Germany. But coffee at 11? That's pretty. (laughs) He must be keeping the late night hours. If he's well, he's got to stay up for this awesome conversation. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Um, Speaking of which, um, for for a lot of a lot of the people tuning in right now are going to be familiar with the Hen House Prowlers. If you like bluegrass music, you know who the Hen House Prowlers are. But um, for those who who may not be familiar with your music. And uh, and this album, could you one of you just give a brief bio of the band and kind of what led up to the recording of this album we're going to listen to today? Yeah, uh, so the band started in 2004. We were we really just started as a uh, a Tuesday night uh, side gig. We all played in other bands, and uh, we formed this as just just a side bluegrass band. We were playing every Tuesday night at a little bar in, on the north side of Chicago. Uh, and gradually we started getting better and people started to come see us and we started playing more shows and started traveling out of town. Um, and, uh, this became our main band, uh, by about 2007, 2008 or so. Um, and we were traveling so much, it became too much for some of the original members. So started having some lineup changes, um, and uh it you know it, uh it was all good i i feel like every time we we you know we, we just kept getting better um we kept <laughs> making good. albums that's the uh, way you want to go I right mean, <laughs> there's and there's obviously it's always a room to improve but we were we kept uh we kept leveling up and and uh moving up business wise too playing more shows um and uh 
leading up to this this version of the band, um, we had oh we actually started playing in Europe um, around uh, 2011 was our first time going to Europe. Uh, and uh, Ben, you're laughing at me. Well, Jake, <laughs> J- J- our current mandolin player just just commented in saying, oh, no. "I'm listening on the road from somewhere in Michigan, <laughs> waiting for the excuses and why I wasn't asked to play on Breaking Ga- Brown." <laughs> 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 Funny story about that, but we'll get to that. But, but, oh, yeah, right, sure. Go ahead, John. Go ahead. So, um, uh, 20, 2011, we go to Europe for our first time. Um, and then uh, our guitar player at the time was a guy named Eric Lambert. Uh, he left the band. Um, you know, he just wanted to do his own thing. We're still great friends with him. Um, and, uh, we found we had a guy named star moss join the band on guitar a uh, young kid who was what was he 24 at the time 25 milwaukee born yeah raised. and we had, we already had grant zolkowski on the mandolin who was also milwaukee born and raised so we have a picture oh here. yeah there they are oh wow nice uh, <laughs> and uh dan andry uh who we had known fiddle, fiddle player we had known kind of <laughs> uh I guess you could say he bribed his way into the band. <laughs> he, he, he insisted, that's for sure. He insisted his way into the bribing is a little heavy of a term. Uh, <laughs> he insisted his way, and and we decided, yeah, sure. Well, well, you know, he he's seems like a nice guy, good good fiddle player. We'll get him in the band. Um, and uh, we uh, recorded this yeah. album. <laughs> well, <laughs> nice. And this was the crew that recorded the album, yeah. This was the crew. All right. Uh, and it was it was interesting because at the time it was you know Ben and I had been doing this for about nine years at the time, and these guys came in. They were like this young blood coming in. They were all twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. So in a way, it felt like this infusion of young energy, uh, and a lot of the songs on this album are songs that the first songs we started working on in those early practices with these guys. So awesome. Yeah. Well, I think that probably be the best way to, to get a feel for that young energy. So just dive right in and start listening. And the first track that we have lined up here is a track called soul saver. Um, is there anything you want to say about, uh, that track before we listen to it? Or do you want to talk about it afterwards? Uh, ben, what do you have to say about this song? I mean, you wrote it. Uh, <laughs> Like I mean, this I, I like that we still play this song a lot. Uh, this still is a on great, the set. Yeah, it's this is a a, a a song that that makes fun of proselytizing late night television show hosts. Uh, <laughs> so nice. Yeah, we have a theme going on, uh, yeah, don't we, Alan? Nice. Last week we had uh, another Chicago artist, uh, Susan Werner, who um, talked about her agnostic uh, gospel album. We're, we're, we have like some, I like this. It's like kind <laughs> of nice thread. Yeah. Re- a religion adjacent uh, and <laughs> religion critical. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, let's give it a listen. And, uh, and, and then we can talk a little bit more about it. This is the Hen House Prowlers Soul Saver here on the Back Catalog Listening Party. Soul Savers. It's all for money. Promise and redemption. In the land of milk and honey. Tiresome, treacherous work and spoil Suffering, pain and heartache Along comes a man we've never seen With promises of pleasure and relief But beware, I'm warning all you sinners The simple plain soul saver is a thief Soul saver Saving souls for money Promising redemption In the land of milk and honey Soul saver Please reveal your cause Saver, I think you are the worst that ever was. And who are you to say you've seen the light? Who am I to think that you are wrong? Whether you are dealing hard to 
or states When you make a weak man from a strong So gather round, I do believe it's time So favor says with money on his mind Receive your donation at the door And to heaven you will go forevermore So savor Saving souls for money Promise and redemption In the land of milk and honey So savor Please reveal your cause So savor, I think you are the worst that ever was Second coming, prepare for final judgment and the rapture. Soul saver, may I purchase your assurance that my soul, our saver, he will capture. Cause we're living in an era of destruction, choosing luxury over reduction. Who am I and do I have a function? Soul saver, I'll yield to your instruction. Soul saver, save us all for money. Promise and redemption in the land of milk and honey. So savor, please reveal your cause. So savor, I think you are the worst that ever was. So savor, I think you are the worst that ever. <laughs> yeah. Oh right. yeah, the Hen House Prowler is kicking off our weekend with Soul Saver from their 2013 release, uh, Breaking Ground. And uh, we saw some, you know, some of your band members chiming in here <laughs> earlier. Um, uh, Dan saying, um, responding to what you were saying about him insisting being on the band in the band, he said, "You can say it. I forced you." Um, and uh, some nice. Uh, comments uh from them and you know mentioning the ma the mandolin too on this record um uh is when that break happens and the mando comes in that just like mm -hmm. uh, sealed the deal <laughs> so um i want to ask a little bit about about the arrangements uh especially on on that song um when you brought this song to the band john uh did you have a vision for how it would be or do you guys just sort of play through it and uh i yeah, it's funny, you know, we when when we bring songs to the band, they so often wind up they evolve so much. <laughs> uh, you know, they the arrangements have the songs sing up, take on a completely different form. Um, I remember bring the, bringing the song to the band and thinking it could be a burner like it is, but I also kind of envisioned it as like a a slower, bluesier, almost like Stanley Brothers kind of mm. feel. Um but uh, it just works as a as a burner. It's got that yeah. fire and brimstone energy. Yeah. <laughs> and 20 something energy in there too, man. Those are some hot hot licks in there. <laughs> For sure. It's, it's funny I I I'll be honest, I probably haven't listened to this album in 7 years. Uh, cuz I don't I don't listen to our albums after they're done really. But that was interesting to listen to that and I didn't realize that we split the so my solo break with Dan and it's weird the memories that come back i remember working on this song in the basement of my apartment hmm. uh or my apartment was in the basement and i remember sitting around uh the table and working out the harmonies for this it's funny i remember the the really high soul saver that's kind of like a howl on top of it working that out uh, just listening to that brought it back it's funny that's great. That's one of the kind of the nice things about uh, listening back to your stuff, and you know, after a, a certain amount of time has passed, you can really ingest it in a certain way. One of the ideas behind the show is not to listen to song, like stuff that just came out or is coming right. out, right? Because you don't really have that that kind of perspective. perspective yeah. yeah. So, have you? Would you say you said this is still on the set? Like, is it is it a lot different? Is it pretty much the same? Has it has it? Have you changed uh, how you play it now? This it's one is a lot different. Yeah, this one is pretty much kept to the same form. You know, right. maybe the particular uh, solo, like the banjo solo or the guitar solo, might be in a different place, but it's generally the same. We mm -hmm. you know, we still have the mandolin come in with that. Yeah, outro. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it used to be fiddle for a while. I think when we for a while we didn't have a mandolin. Yeah, and Dan would Dan would take it out on the fiddle. Uh, but but yeah. It, uh, far you know you'd you'd absolutely recognize this song if you heard us play it live now yeah 
Well, and you know, it's something that I appreciate about your band is that like, it's pretty common to play gospel music, let's say in bluegrass, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and you guys definitely know the idiom, um, but then you bring in your own um, kind of perspective on it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so John, that may be a question for you in that tune. Um, were you thinking about like, uh, you know, the kind of, I don't know, the juxtaposition of that type of um, ca condemnation? <laughs> With uh, with the the kind of the traditional bluegrass gospel message, yeah, for sure. It def like I th I think that's where I I heard it initially as possibly having that of like a slower bluesier, uh, like I said, like you know, you know Stanley Brothers kind of feel. Um, uh, you know where it was it it would it could it could sound more uh, more gospely, mm -hmm. uh, but. There's yeah, probably people in, in, at some bluegrass festivals who just hear Soul Saver and they're like, I love that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's always a few uh, feel like that. <laughs> Maybe if they've only heard it once. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, here at the Back Catalog Listening Party, we we are very deep listeners, so we're listening to all those uh, all those lyrics. And yeah, and, and I and, and we we're, we totally like to geek out on on things like process. So one and one question I love to ask is, where was it recorded? Was there an engineer or a producer, or was it just you guys? And did you, you know, did you did you isolate and play to a click, or did you all sit in a room and and, and rock it out? Like, what was the what was the process in this uh, with this record? Uh, we recorded it at Ivy Lab Studio in Chicago, um, which at the time was uh, Sheridan and Irving Park Road, mm -hmm. roughly, uh, for those who are familiar with Chicago. Um, we it's not had there anymore. Uh, no, yeah, it's, it is not. They moved, and then since then are even are no more. Um, Chris Harden was the engineer who currently lives in uh, or around Denver, Colorado. Uh, we had um, Greg Cahill producing. All right, uh, of special mm -hmm. consensus fame. Who is uh, episode number what was it forty nine here? Oh, yeah, we had no, Greg and oh, yeah. spe special C on the show. What, what so. album did you guys go over? Um, uh, roads and what was it? Oh yeah, river, uh, rivers and roads. Rivers yes. and roads. Yep, mm -hmm. nice. yep. Great album. Anyways, <laughs> speaking of which, I thought in one of the photos that you shared, I, I could see Greg there in there. Is that yeah. Greg? In yeah, the, on the side. Yeah, that's the that only bigger. photo that I could find that I had. Uh, <laughs> he was um, half yeah. of his face. I was going to say, he looks like he's trying to not be in the photo. He's like, I don't know if I want to be captured on film. <laughs> he <laughs> saw the camera come out. And uh, <laughs> so is this, uh, is this, yeah, is this bringing him in uh, on one of the tracks then? Oh, this photo. He, he he played. Did he play on any of the tracks? He played on a couple of the tracks. Uh, I think he? we'll hear we'll hear at least one of them that he played on. Um, nice. Yeah. Wonderful. That's great. And you, yeah. So was this like a kind of a new thing for you guys to bring in like kind of guest artists? I noticed it was a Josh Williams picking guitar on a song, and I mean these are some some pretty pretty mm -hmm. sweet pickers. How did that come about? These these kind of collaborations. Obviously, Greg's yeah. in the Chicago area, but. Yeah, and, and you know, Gre Greg produced, and so he, I mean, just out of coincidence, we were in the studio one day, and Josh was coming through town, and they were going to play a show. Robbie Folks had a thing on Monday nights. Mm -hmm. uh, another another yeah. one of our previous guests. <laughs> oh, yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. And, and so Robbie had Josh and Greg coming out that Monday night, and we were in the studio, and I think I called Greg and was just like, hey, I know Robbie's, mm -hmm. or I know I know Josh is coming into town. Can you get him to come and sit on our album? He's like, sure. Uh, so it wasn't, it was not a like months before planned out thing. It was like perfect timing kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then Josh came in. I don't know if you've ever met Josh Williams. He's I've like seen him perform a lot. But the I coolest freaking cu cucumber on the planet. Uh, and he just kind of like, you know, whooshed into the studio and, and left us all kind of aghast that's how i remember it just like oh my god this super tall insanely talented guy who sat down and took one solo and made it. and he's like well I, you, what do you guys think and he's like uh you know i could do it again and we were like sure do it again but we used the first one he did like i mean it was it was we wild. just want to hear you play yeah i was gonna yeah. say you just made him do a lot of passes just so you could watch yeah. him it was amazing so, right on well, um, it wasn't it wasn't quite the order that we had it in, but you know we happen to have this track um, Ravenswood Getaway mm -hmm. that I believe features his hit that solo, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and also Greg Cahill on this one as well. Is that correct? 
Is Grant yeah. on this? Is yeah, it? yeah, yeah. They both were on this one. I'm terrible about this stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. If, oh, go ahead. No, I was just, no. I, well, I was going to say Josh's. I think is the second solo on this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Because well, there's see, the Star takes one too, just so you can differentiate the two guitar styles. So he takes first solo and, uh, and Josh on the later second. On. Uh, no, star, uh, Josh is for Josh is the second, uh, like second after the original banjo, initial banjo solo. Yeah, so Josh and, and, Williams' first guitar solo, yeah, star is second, star guitar, second guitar, solo. guitar solo. All right, well, just so folks who are listening at home um, can track this too, um, do you happen to remember which solo is Greg Cahill and which is Ben? Because I was listening and I was like, wow, they're both amazing solos, and I couldn't remember which who was who. I'm pretty sure well, Ben you, is at the top, and then yeah, yeah, Greg does his own later. And then maybe you guys... Pretty- do you guys share one later on? What? What? Well, oh my goodness! Banjos, <laughs> banjos coming out our ears here at the back catalog listening party. This is a this is a fun one. This is a great way to um, to get your Friday afternoon going. We're going to listen to the Henhouse Prowlers, Ravenswood Getaway here on the back catalog listening party. Yeah, that That's deserves so the cool. applause. I get oh. the applause doesn't always come out, but man, there was there was a lot of fine fine notes oh, being played that on that good track. Good stuff. Henhouse Prowlers with uh, Ravenswood Getaway, and uh, by the way, we should say if you're out there applauding and you're listening on the YouTube's, on the internets, and you're like, 
I wish they could hear my applause. Well, you know, one way they can hear your applause is, you know, money talks. So uh, there is a tip jar uh, and you can uh, throw money in there. Yeah, PayPal. And um, also you can buy the album. Uh, And I will say we're listening in, you know, before it gets fed through the Internet and it sounds even better than probably what you're hearing. So Ed Ed nailed it. uh, Smoking. Yeah, yep. yep. <laughs> and and you can uh, get it on CD or vinyl from their website. Just saying. So vinyl, you know, not vinyl. too many of the albums we've reviewed um, have the vinyl uh, available. Um, mm-hmm. So this, that's uh, that's pretty awesome. So you should hop on over to henhouseprowlers dot com. Get your get your vinyl edition, and uh, and I'm sure uh, these guys would even put a signature on it for you, wouldn't you? And, and speaking of that, I heard I saw that Dan was mentioning about. Um, that when they saw, when star signed yeah there it is <laughs> yeah it's true. Over <laughs> i love that that's great i have to say those solos were amazing and that's the that is the tune you'd play when you want people to throw some money in your tip jar because that does it man and is that a, a, a ben wright original yeah oh. awesome yeah. awesome uh, have you been writing songs on the banjo instrumentals on the banjo for a long time at this point uh, yeah, but I mean, I kind of got, I, I got away from it after the first few years. Uh, like our, our most recent album has an instrumental by Jake, our, our mandolin player, current mandolin player, who's a just a, a, a ingenious mel- melody writer. And, uh, so I haven't lately and I'm totally okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the world only has room for so many banjo songs, but it's this right. was a great one, man. It's got its own flavor. Um, there's a real melody in there. And I think that's, that's the key to a, to a tasty banjo tune. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's funny listening back on that. I, I, I would be hard pressed to say one of those band, one of those, uh, guitar solos was better than the other. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, that, you know, I, I agree. Uh, and and I, I that I think that's a real testament to the guitar player that Star Moss is. We all know that Josh Williams is one of the best ever, but man, Star Moss and you know he he was so intimidated by Josh. And it's just like, dude, that solo is so great. <laughs> that it, you know, like he has just nothing to worry about. Well, what's interesting is is I saw that Josh was a guest on this, um, and when I just gave it a quick listen, kind of prepping for the show. I assumed that first solo was was Josh. Right. See. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was like, man, that's 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 great. You know, Josh yeah. really killing it on that solo, and it was uh, <laughs> that's him. That's that's really cool. Um, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And you say you still play this one uh, in the show? We, or? we do. We play it about twice as fast now. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. and that's not an exaggeration. Like seriously, it's <laughs> twice as fast as that. Wow. Yeah. Well. One one uh, one thing that I I wanted to just talk a little bit more about. I talked about it a little bit with your tune, John, and and maybe we, we can talk about it with this one too, Ben. And that is this kind of challenge that you know an urban bluegrass band from the north ha- has. Uh, it's a it's a it's a, an issue near and dear to my heart, just because I feel like bluegrass is all about authenticity. So you kind of have to write what you know, and that's usually when it sounds the best. And uh, and so I just wanted to kind of talk to you guys about that. You know, like you always kind of seem to infuse your own henhouse vibes on on tunes. Like it might sound a little like Ralph or Jimmy Martin or something like that, but it always has a little bit of that. Um, I don't know uh, Chicago edge or something to it. Um, it, it. Can you talk a little bit about what it's like to write in this in this uh, genre um, for you guys? Yeah, I mean, I thought about that a lot too, uh, and I've tried to write some songs that were more like akin to. Uh, the stuff you hear written about rural life, uh, but it doesn't come across and it, it comes across as super cheesy and not, not authentic, like you're saying. So I don't know if we have much of a choice. Maybe if I was a better songwriter, uh, I'd have a, have, a, have a choice. But the, the only songs that I personally like that I've written are the ones that came out real fast and were something I was super familiar with, you know, topic wise. Sure. Uh, so, or maybe yeah. you don't have words at all, like in this case. And yeah, in this case for sure. <laughs> and, and John mentioned uh, kind of behind the scenes here that you should tell the story behind Ravenswood Getaway. Speaking of songwriting, is there a story uh, behind the tune that you want to share? Maybe John knows it. <laughs> wait, but wait, behind which tune? Ravenswood Getaway. Oh, yeah. I can make this. I'll try to make this short. I used to. Uh, I used to teach banjo lessons. I, I had a, I was a social worker, and after class, there was a period where I was trying to transition between 
being a social worker and being a full-time musician. And in the afternoons, I'd go up to Evanston and teach banjo. And uh, there was a, uh, shut up, Dan. Dan says we'll be here all day. Uh, and I had to take the Metra up to, uh, up to Evanston. And there's the Ravenswood stop on the Metra. Uh, and one day I walked up there on the pl platform waiting for the train to come. And there was another guy on the platform who was about 75 years old. That was how he appeared at least. And he was kind of standing over a trash can, throwing things into the trash can. And I got closer to him and, and realized he was covered in what, what looked like blood. Uh, oh. And uh, he was peeling a piece of paper off the stack and throwing them into the trash can. And I asked him if he was okay. And he really gruffly told me to leave him alone. So I did, and I kind of stood back and wa kept watching and realized pretty quickly that he had just robbed the bank next to the train oh, there. Uh, and that was ink that exploded all over him. Uh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> and uh, right about when I realized what was going on, three cop cars screeched to a halt, and all the cops started running up. And he, the guy moved away from me, uh, away from where the cops were. So I was in between the cops and this guy, and they pointed their guns at me. Oh, my uh, goodness. And, and they were like, I put my hands up. <laughs> I was like, and I, I remember very specifically, I put my hands up and I went. Like, <laughs> yeah, and I, uh, and they, they got him. And, uh, and I, and I, the train came and left because the cops made me stay there. And I gave my story to the cops. And I remember the police officer thanked me for taking the time to tell him the story. And then he saw the banjo on my back and he was like, that's going to make one hell of a song. <laughs> and, uh, so uh so that was that's kind of the inspiration for it so. that's a hell of a story too man it's like a modern day <laughs> bonnie and clyde um yeah. so, uh story behind it i'm gonna hear that song differently now from now yeah. on <laughs> well and it, it makes sense why you would get it faster because you know if you're trying to get away you want it to be as fast as possible um i will say that uh, you know it does sound like a song that you think would have a a, a narrative component did you did you ever sort of just you know, play with putting lyrics to it, or did you always know it was an instrumental tune? I, you know, I, I didn't even, it never even, I don't think I was a good, very, I wasn't experienced at songwriting at that point. Because mm -hmm. I wrote the tune a few years before we actually recorded it. Uh, and I just wasn't that comfortable in my songwriting shoes to take that on. And by the time it got to the point where we were recording an album with it, it had already been an instrumental for so long. Mm -hmm. And so it just, that's just what it was. You well, know? you certainly couldn't sing lyrics. It would be, you'd be hard pressed to sing lyrics to keep up with the speed, especially the speed at which you play it now. <laughs> I <think>. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Alan says, just think if the train had been on time, he'd have gotten away. Oh, that sounds like the end of the chorus line, by the way. right there. So maybe <laughs> you could do like a follow up to the uh, was, Ravens would give away. I was just going to say, and Alan Hastings might have to have a co write on that. So. Uh, <laughs> A word a third, so <laughs> as the Nashville adage goes. Um, well, if you just <laughs> tuned in to the Back Catalog Listening Party, we're talking with Ben and John from the Hen House Prowlers about their 2013 release, Breaking Ground. This is what we do every Friday in the 4 p.m. Central time zone. We get together, hang out, have some drinks, listen to some music, get the backstory behind these songs. And uh, this is so much fun to dig into this record with you guys. Uh, the next song, because we want to make sure we get to a few more before the end of today's show, uh, is Drunk Again. Is there anything mm. you want to say about this song? I'm sure you've never been drunk. So <laughs> yeah. I, mean... I love this song. This was a Star Moss song. He wrote this song. Uh, and I can tell what John's about to tell the inspiration for it. <laughs> Uh, which was me. Uh, <laughs> I'm putting you on the big, the big well, screen this, here, John. This, 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 uh, this is why this uh, drink I'm drinking is topical. This Belgian beer I'm drinking. All right. It's topical to this album and specifically this song. Um, Belgian beers are pretty strong and mm -hmm. and delicious. Um, and, Agreed. Uh, I believe if I can tell the story for Ben. <laughs> Uh, at the way Ben tells it, uh, we were in Belgium at the end of a sh after a show one night, and uh, Ben sat down next to Star. Star said, "Hey, how's it going?" And Ben said, "Well, I'm drunk again." <laughs> 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 and and Star uh, ran with that with with that as a title and as a theme. Uh, um, it's 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 not about necessarily about that particular no. interaction 
but he definitely ran with it. Uh, killer, got a, killer song. Got a little Jim, Jimmy Martin vibe going on in this one. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love uh, I love it. Um, this is for all of those folks out there that maybe would relate to uh, to the title of this this tune. Hopefully not at four thirty Central, but um, you know. Where, 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 wherever no you are, yeah. <laughs> cheers to you. Here's the Hen House Prowlers, drunk again, here on the Back Catalog Listening Party. I'll search out the bars in this sorry old town. That was the Hen House Prowlers with Drunk Again from their 2013 release, Breaking Ground, and uh, inspired by uh, some of that wonderful Belgian beer uh, when they were touring in Europe. And Chris had a a question. Any other repeatable stories from Europe tours? Interesting to bring bluegrass to them. And uh, he said, did you get a chance to go to Valdu Abbey for some Belgian beer? So that's a couple questions. Yeah, where's Valdu? Do you know, John? I I don't know. It doesn't ring a bell. Um, doesn't ring a bell. I, I saw I saw that comment and I started thinking like what what are some stories that I mean there's a million of them. We've been a <laughs> whole bunch. Uh and I, I I can't it's funny, I can't think of a specific one that would be appropriate or inappropriate <laughs> to tell here. But <laughs> but but I I mean I I, I can say that I, I, I it never loses its luster to me to have the opportunity to to tour in that part of the world and to uh have made friends in that part of the world i just got a message this afternoon from a good friend of ours in in leuven belgium belgium who is uh buying they're they're buying a evelyn's buying a new house john and uh, and like they're like 
we can't wait to host you guys and we miss you. It's been a couple of years since we were able to go back. And I, we used to go at least once a year. And, uh, you know, it's nice to be touring again. I can't wait to get back to Europe because there is this sense, palpable sense of appreciation for American music over there. And you go and you play and people are just kind of like, they just love the music we play. And some of the best responses we've gotten is in Spain, believe it or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh you know like we've it we took a big long tour of spain and, and every single show it's just full of people who just could not believe that we were playing music for them and we couldn't believe that they were listening to our music <laughs> it well, was just oh. precious <laughs> that brings up uh, a topic i did want to address which is your bluegrass ambassadors program that you guys do so um why don't you tell folks a little bit about that it's one of the coolest coolest things um uh, out there it, it's a a mission of this show really is is we really do believe in music and the power of music to bring people together and and it seems like we have a shared mission there and i'd love to hear love for people to hear a little bit about what the bluegrass ambassadors are and what they do and and uh some of the places you've been yes so uh on going to europe was kind of step one to our international adventures uh and it really, it really kind of whetted our appetite for wanting to be abroad as much as possible and make those cross-cultural connections, uh, which are fairly, you know, it's, they're not that difficult to do in countries that speak English. Uh, and, you know, most people in Europe, a large percentage of people in Europe speak English as the common language there. And uh, so we, after a few years of going to Europe, we uh, found out about a program called American Music Abroad. Um, that if any musicians are listening to this, I encourage anybody and all, any and all bands to consider applying. Uh, applications open in a couple weeks, uh, and that that program is based on the 1950s jazz ambassador programs, uh, hmm. which were kind of musical diplomacy programs uh, that started up because of the Cold War, uh, and really we were trying to culturally go to war with Russia. And Russia had ballets and, or and orchestras, and we had jazz. And so they sent like Louis Armstrong and Dave Brubeck, all these, the most famous jazz musicians all over the world. Heavy artillery. Uh, yeah, I mean, and they're, some of those stories are unbelievable, absolutely worth nerding out on. There's a, <laughs> a great documentary called The Jazz Ambassadors that came out a couple of years ago that is just fabulous. Uh, but that programming, even after the Cold War stopped, like I, I kind of like to say that, and we've heard this direct out of ambassadors' mouths that, like, man, what you guys do in 45 minutes on stage is a tantamount to what I do in a year as an ambassador. Hmm. Uh, and these are from like like diplomat ambassadors. Diplomats, wow. yeah. Wow. Like, actually, actually, we had someone say that to us in Pakistan. <laughs> wow. Uh, and uh, and so we, you know, I think because we loved the work, we were naturally pretty good at it. You know, we work, we put a lot of time and work at it, and we learned quickly that if we go to these countries, like on the continent of Africa or in Central Asia or wherever they sent us, if we showed up with a song, and learned to sing in their language, uh, we had made the most powerful connections you could ever make with people we didn't actually share a language with. Wow! Uh, and and we realized quickly that these were these opportunities we were building to come home with these experiences and this knowledge and this music and share it with both kids and adults alike back at home. And that's what Bluegrass Ambassadors is. It's a, we started a nonprofit to uh, use bluegrass as kind of this foundation to hopefully connect people from across the world. Uh, and so we do school programs. We're going into a school next week. Uh, and we also, we did a program in the Czech Republic a couple of years ago that was uh, that was kind of our first non-State Department funded program, and we want to continue to to do these these cross cultural collaborations and educational programs with people all over the world. It's pretty rewarding stuff. That, that is so cool. Awesome. Um, if folks want to learn more about the Bluegrass Ambassadors program, they can go to bluegrassambassadors.org. We have it on the screen here, and I'll toss it in the comments as well. Thanks for sharing that. I think mm -hmm. I think that's the that's such a cool cool thing, and it's so neat that you guys just took the reins on this and made Thanks. it happen. Yeah, very, very cool. And um, one thing I was noticing when we were listening to the the three songs we've heard so far from this record, Breaking Ground, is that it's kind of, although it's all 
generally bluegrass. Uh, they all have pretty different flavors. Uh, you know, there's one that's sort of, you know, sort of like the gospel bluegrass, one that's sort of the rip roaring instrumental. And then as, as uh, Tony said, a more kind of Jimmy Martin style tune. And uh, this next tune is uh, a little bit different uh, that we're going to listen to. It's a cover. <laughs> oh. So um, is there anything you want to say about why you decided to turn this song, not known as a bluegrass song into one? I mean, I, because Dan Andrew was in the band, uh, and, <laughs> and he, he Dan Andrew has a vocal, a unique vocal power. I mean, he just he can own something like this, and uh, and it's just it's a sight to behold. Like he's he's just a force of nature. And so I remember when he brought this, he was very trepidatiously like, "What if we do this song?" And I was like, "Yeah, let's do it," because. I mean, when else are we going to be able to do something like this? Guys that can sing with that much soul uh, in, in that very specific soul way don't necessarily play bluegrass all that often. So, <laughs> All right. And uh, let's just give it a listen. I think uh, the, the song speaks for itself. This is the Hen House Prowlers doing their take on Ain't Too Proud to Beg here on the Back Catalog Listening Party. But I refuse to let you go If I have to beg and plead for your sympathy I don't mind, cause you mean that much to me Ain't too proud to beg Sweet darling, please don't leave me, girl Don't you go Ain't too proud to be baby, baby Please don't leave me, girl Don't you go Now I heard a kind man is half a man with no sense of pride If I have to cry to keep you I don't mind weeping If it'll keep you by my side I Ain't too proud to beg Sweet darling Please don't leave me girl don't you go. Ain't too proud to be Baby, baby Please don't leave me girl don't you go. If I have to see On your doorstep all night and day Just to keep from walking away Let your friends laugh Even this I can stand Cause I wanna keep you Any way I can Ain't the pound of bag Sweet darling Please don't leave me too Ain't too proud to be Baby, baby Please don't leave me
<laughs> that was pretty sweet. I wish it hadn't Epic. faded so quick because that was a sweet lick going out there. Yeah, um, and I don't recall a, a Dobro player no. being in the band. Can you... That was Anders Beck uh, 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 Green Sky Bluegrass fame. Uh, well, that was so uh, cool. So cool. And I have to say, I, I think that song right there by the Hen House Prowlers, their version of Ain't Too Proud to Beg, shows why they are uniquely positioned to be bluegrass ambassadors because they, they, uh, they can uh, translate music into so many idioms. And that one, I think, is cool because you get to hear where Motown and bluegrass have some of the same roots in the blues. You know, you hear those those bluesy licks. And I like um, that little tag at the end. They were quoting the dun, 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 yeah. Dun, dun, dun. That was that was nice. Oh, and man, those vocals. I wish you could have seen my face during that, because not only was I bopping around a lot, um, the head bobble was going on, but I had the biggest grin every time he hit one of those falsetto patches. It was just <laughs> he went so for it, man. That was, he went all, all in on that one. <laughs> and I think my other big question for you, the guys, though, on this is, so obviously those great soulful lead vocals, but some really sweet backing vocals. And I don't know, does everyone sing in the band? Um, because you guys have some sweet harmonies, and the backing vocals were so tight. And I, it made me think of, you know, some of those classic Motown and soul acts. They had the great, you know, like Gladys Knight had the pips, right? You know, and they not only had the sweet backing vocals, but they had the great moves. And I want to know, oh. have you ever considered what the bluegrass sometimes has some choreography? You know, if you use like a single mic or whatever. Um, have you thought about doing any moves with this song or do you do any moves <laughs> with this song? Well, we we don't really play this song much. And we don't play the song unless Dan's around anymore. Mm. Uh, but we we are a single mic band, so we we do move around a fair amount. Uh, <clears throat> I've thought about wanting to have more choreographed in the Motown sense for mm -hmm. for songs, but you really risk like looking pretty cheesy doing that. Too, you <laughs> it's know? a fine it's, line. It's a delicate balance. <laughs> and it the powder, really I'll see you in the powder blue suits too. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I just, I, I'm throwing it out there, you know, yeah. you never know if you don't ask. So, um, and uh, I also, uh, we got a question from, from Mark uh, saying, when you reflect on an album, are there things you wish you would have done differently? Uh, by the way, I love listening on this on vinyl. Uh, it really feels like I'm in the room. So is there anything you would have done different on this record in particular? I don't, nothing really, nothing that I can think of. Mm -hmm. Ben. You know, I could hear, I could, I mean, it's, it's funny how unsettling it is to hear the, 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 uh, the changes like in drunk again, we've changed the feel and the yeah. vibe and, uh, and now yeah. the original version sounds wrong. <laughs> yeah. You know? I it got road way, tested a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it evolves, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The way songs have evolved, like Ravenswood getaway, we play about twice as fast as we did mm -hmm. on this album and uh and drunk again we play about half the speed that we did on this <laughs> yeah album. and and uh, you know and cur our current guitar player who is also just a, a dynamo vocalist he sings drunk again and he, he's changed it i think intentionally yeah. to make to get some ownership over it and because it's the way i play it now and listen to it I love it that way. We actually, I actually played with Star a few months ago, and we did Drunk Again. And I like, I kept looking at him the way I look at somebody in my band when they screw something up. <laughs> I'm just like, that's not how it goes that's anymore. That's wrong. And it's like, I'm telling the guy who wrote the song internally, it's wrong. Like, it's just funny how that stuff works. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, when yeah. you get used to it, and and uh, and he and Mark mentioned uh, the vinyl. So once again, um, I want to one more plug here for. Um, going out and getting the album you know it uh they have it on vinyl um which is which is really special they have it on cd and uh you know mm. in this day and age look at that in this day and age of uh of of you know streaming music uh musicians aren't making much from from those those plays um and so just one purchase <laughs> of a vinyl record is like listening to to them for like five years or something crazy like that so um, <laughs> a little goes a long way so head on head, head on over to the henhouseprowlers.com and uh and and show them some love and uh and get yourself a, a vinyl copy of this album and when you're at that uh website you're going to want to both flag the website follow them on the socials because i hear you guys have a big 
announcement coming on Tuesday. Is that right? So, yeah, yeah. Yep. and we so we're not supposed to talk about it. Yet, I know, but, but but we can tell you that there is something child. coming. So that's yes. the announcement that yes. there will be an announcement on exactly. Tuesday. Exactly. So while you're at at their website purchasing uh, the music, <laughs> you can sign up to their email list, and and I bet you they'll you'll be the first to know um, about what that uh, what that announcement might be. Yeah, and then maybe mm-hmm. you can. Um, uh, also check out upcoming shows and um, also see those these songs that we're talking about perform live in all the different iterations uh, that you can enjoy them. So yeah. um, I had one question too about the since you showed it on vinyl, the album artwork. Um, maybe we can get it back on the screen yeah, if you still have it, Tony. Mm-hmm. Is that um, this is such mm-hmm. a cool cover? Obviously, you have the the hen there, but the the roots coming from the yeah. eye is so cool. Who did this artwork? It's beautiful. Uh, Liz Burr, the, right? Yeah, exactly. Liz Burr. Yeah. Um, she's just a very talented artist. Um, yeah. Look her up. She's fantastic. And she, she does the art for a, a festival. We play a lot down here called shoe fest. That's a very family, like family oriented, but still rocking festival. And she just, I think one of the area's best artists for music stuff. She's fabulous. And you can get this artwork in big, uh, big format if you get it on vinyl. So uh, definitely wall art version. <laughs> Chris is getting the vinyl. Yeah, good for you, Chris. Right. Good on you, That's man. Right. It's going to sound good. Um, and it is. This is the the, the fastest the fastest hour of the week because it's yeah, man, right? it's so much so much fun. Goodbye. I can't believe we're uh, we're approaching uh, the end here. Um, but it sounds the, like uh, folks might be up for one more. I don't know. If, what if, do you guys if ben, ben and John, we do have one more track we could listen to if you guys have, have the time. Sure. I got time. Yeah. All okay. right. All right. Well, the last track we have um, lined up here is Den of Sin, ah. um, which now I'm, I'm wondering it could go lots of different ways, <laughs> given, all, given all the songs we've heard today. Uh, anybody want to me- say anything about this tune here before we dive in? Yeah. Can I, can yeah, I say please. this, John? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So Grant Zolkowski, uh, uh, he and Star Moss w- grew up as best friends, and they went. They were both in the band in the band together. It was weird. They had this like secret language that they spoke to each other, uh, but they they both were super talented and kind of reserved, quiet guys. Uh, and in the period where they were in the band, we played this place down in uh, Evansville, I'm- Indiana, uh, called La Masco. Uh, and it's this it's a great place it's kind of just a bar the owner's name amy and she takes really good care of bands and was paying us w- way better than most bars like that typically would because she's such a great community person and knows that bands struggle and gave us a place to sleep and you, you, actually now there's a place in the bar where bands can sleep but at the time we used to after the show go back to her place and what's funny is she doesn't care that we talk about this okay? because <laughs> uh, she's such a she's such an amazing person. And we, we would go back to her, her very nice, very nice house. And there would always be a party till the wee hours in the morning. And it was just kind of a debaucherous party. Not <laughs> not not as bad as you can imagine, but just just party, you know, like party. And we made we started calling it. Uh, Amy's Den of Sin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know how that. I, I think. I mean, it just kind of came out of somebody's <laughs> mouth one day, and and Grant liked that and wrote this song again, just based on the title. Like you know, he wrote some a you know a lost love song based on. But it is a great t- title, uh, and it's a great song. I love this song, which we All also right. still do. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. th- oh, go ahead. Oh no! I was going to say we still play it. Chris Chris yeah. Dollar, our current guitar player, does an yeah, amazing job. It. Well, now yeah. we know it's it's actually Amy's um, den <laughs> of right. den <laughs> of sin <laughs> here from the Hen House Prowlers on the Back Catalog Listening Party. I used to call this house a happy home. Just you and I, no need to want to roam I guess I held you up too high Sitting there on your own Call me a fool, but I thought that's where you belong Well, I told you I had to go, but it wouldn't be long I gave you extra kisses for the nights that I'd be gone When I was gone for the weekend, but the 
verdict is in This ain't nothing more than your little den of sin The bay put out a call for willing men There's a lockdown state that could use a hand to land After three more days I'd be back to you And I thought our ship would come in That ship had sailed no mean den of sin Well, I told you I had to go But it wouldn't be long I gave you extra kisses for the night said I'd be gone Well, I was gone for the weekend But the verdict was in This ain't nothing more than your little den of sin The Hen House Prowlers with Den of Sin from their 2013 release, Breaking Ground, which we have been revisiting today with two of the members today on the Back Catalog Listening Party. This has been such a fun hour. So much fun. Um, so much fun. Yeah. Thank and you, guys. Sure. So great uh, to have you here and to <clears throat> dig into this bluegrass music, kicking off our weekend, right? And for those of you who are new to the show or, or who just tuned in or who are regulars, make sure to like the episode. Give it the thumbs up on youtube to direct more bots to hen house prowlers and if you uh if you haven't already subscribe to our youtube channel to be notified of what's coming up next and for the bluegrass fans out there in a couple weeks actually good morning bedlam will be on the show and they nice. actually are playing tonight for the twin cities folks at 8 p.m with barbara one of our past guests so uh, some great uh bluegrass music happening here in the twin cities and on back catalog and uh next week because we play all kinds of roots music on the show we have austin texas songwriter rebecca Lobie, who was a contestant on The Voice, hmm. but she's had a long career being just a folk singer songwriter. So I, I think we're gonna have some good stories uh, with her that'll next week. So yeah. that'll be fun. Um, but mainly we wanna thank Ben and John for being our guests. And uh... thank you guys for being <laughs> such great hosts. You guys are really good at this. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, After it... what, 80, 80 something episodes, we're learning something. I don't we're, know. we're music awesome. nerds, man. We, we just love this and, and uh, we love your music. So it was, uh, it was great. It was, it was so much fun. And um, yeah, we appreciate we'll you and it. we appreciate all you out there. Severin, um, you know, have another cup of coffee and uh, great to see you, Matthew and everybody else who is out there watching. Uh, we started this during the pandemic when we couldn't see our friends and couldn't 
talk about music or see shows. And we had so much fun doing it every week um, that we decided to keep it going. And one of the ways that we did, we were able to keep it going, because we have to pay for the StreamYard service and other things like that, is we started a Patreon. Um, and we want to give a special shout out to all our patrons who are out there. Thank you all so much. Penny, Ann, Alinda, Bevan, Connie, Vaughn, Alan, Chris, Alex, Becky, Galen, Peggy, Joe, Jim, Beverly, John, Fred, Tim, Sarah, David, Jocelyn, Court, Matt, Steve, Mark, and the Homestead Pickin' Parlor right here uh. in Minneapolis. Um Thank you for supporting the show, and, and, if, and if anybody else there w- wants to support the show, you can hop on over to patreon.com slash listening party, and uh, we'll, uh, you'll be able to, to hear all the guests we have coming up. We have special perks like after parties uh, with the guests and even some live stream concerts and, uh, and maybe some merchandise in our future. After we had mm-hmm. Susan Werner on last week, she, <laughs> we stayed after the show for a few minutes, and she's like, I got some ideas for you. You know, she was talking <laughs> about headphones and tote bags and all kinds of stuff. Um, and it got us really excited. So uh, if you want to learn about where we go with all of that, head on over to patreon.com slash listening party. Um, and make sure you head on over to uh, the handhouseprowlers.com as well. And, uh, and, and, and get check out the, the high 48s too, right? Oh, oh yeah. Yes, that's <laughs> Thanks, right. fellas. Yep. The, I know, the high 48s I know too. You, you, you won't do that, but, uh, but I will. If, if well, any of our fans are listening, <laughs> they should check out the high 48s. They're for awesome. sure. Thanks, Ben. That, well, the first time I met you guys, it was I, I, I figured it out it was 2010. It was a yeah. long, long time ago. We played a show together, High 48, 10 House Prowlers, and Liberty Bluegrass. Uh, yeah. Played a couple <laughs> that shows. Amazing theater in Oshkosh, is that where? Uh, uh, Baraboo. Yeah. Baraboo. Baraboo, the Al Ringling Bar- Theater. Like, maybe we can make that happen again sometime. It would be really yeah, great right? to see you guys in person. Like um, and uh, And again, make sure to watch for that Tuesday announcement oh, from the Hen House right. Prowlers. Yep. Big show. Big show. <laughs> Thanks. All right, folks. Well, thanks again for joining us for this wonderful hour. Thanks again to Ben and John and the Handhouse Prowlers, and we'll see you next week on the Back Catalog Listening Party. Cheers. Cheers. Thank, Thank you, you so much, guys. guys.